This is This Week in Perspective with me, Adam Simbe. The 27th Summit of the African Union Heads of State and Government was held for two days in Kigali, Rwanda, from 17th to 18th July. And Tanzania was represented by the Vice President, Samia Sulu Hassan. Minister of State, President's Office, Zanzibar, Isa Haji Isa, and the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Dr. Agustin Mahiga. The two-day summit discussed a number of significant issues, including, of course, the creation of a common market for Africa, introduction of an OU passport, and financing of the Secretariat, including, of course, security and, uh, and, and un ongoing conflicts in Africa, especially the South Sudan. There are still <coughs> some fundamental questions which needed to be uh, addressed, but uh, about, about the African Union. To discuss and analyze some of these issues with me today are Professor Mohabe Nirabu uh, from University of Dar Islam, Department of Political Science and Public Administration, but he's a specialist of international uh, relations and uh, regional integration. integration. Ambassador Liberetta Mulamula, um, a very well known uh, civil servant. Uh, she was executive director of the Great Lakes organization and permanent not, not then ambassador to Washington and uh, recently permanent secretary Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Deo Balile is a vice chairperson of the e media uh, of the editors forum, uh, a lawyer by profession, and I think he runs uh, he manages a newspaper in Kiswahili, a weekly one called Jamhuri. Last but not least, Professor Joram, Professor Ambassador Joram uh, Biswaro. Um, well, it's a, <laughs> a, a journalist as well. We, we kind of remembered each other in the good old days, but um, he was um, a permanent, he was an ambassador in Ethiopia, at the same time, permanent representative for the AU, again in Addis Ababa. But he's now visiting lecture at a number of universities, including the Yaounde University and several others. We, I mean, it should be a full mouth of uh, referring to them. So, lady and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. First, Thank I must you. be very grateful that uh, you, uh, you all agreed or accepted to come and um, join in the discussion. To enlighten the viewers, this, the Tanzanians who do watch the program, on uh, the African Union um, with its, you know, relevance to, to Africa. Um, let me start with the first question, and I'll ask, I'll ask Professor to react first, and then we'll go around. These summits, as we know, are being held yearly, either in Addis Ababa or in another country, kind of rotating. Although this has been argued in the past that it should be held only at the headquarters, and many resolutions uh, are, being, are, are being made. Um, in your view, is there effective follow-up of the first the discussions of these summits, the resolutions made, the decisions uh, reached, uh, uh, and um, effective implementation? of these resolutions and decisions, if you may. Well, thank you for inviting me here. That is a tall question, man. <laughs> and sitting with the <laughs> diplomats here <laughs> who have been in the kitchen. But let me try. In my view, the African Union and its predecessor, the Organization of African Unity, had too many resolutions. And I think they'll continue to issue resolutions my problem is lack of implementation. Because if most of these resolutions would have been implemented, we would have seen some changes on the issues that are affecting Africa. Mm -hmm. Poverty, yeah. women, mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. conflicts, mm -hmm. development, mm -hmm. donor dependence, and so forth and so on. Yes. So it means that we know the problem, we issue a resolution. But after that, what follows is what is lacking. Again, in your view, what would you say is 
the reason or the cause or the impediment why these resolutions are not implemented? Well, there are several reasons, but I think uh, fundamentally is lack of political will by the member states. Because what is the African Union? It's a constitution. It's, it's an organization that comprises member states. Yes. And ultimately, it is the member states who have to respond to what they have said they're going to go to, 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 uh, to, to, to do. Mm. So the political will at member states level is lacking mm. in order to implement what has been agreed. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Professor Biswar, you were in the kitchen in Addis Ababa. <laughs> you took part in the preparation, in the drafting of the AU uh, constitution. I mean, all these resolutions, as the Professor Mohabe says, there are so many since the days of the Organization of African Unity. And 13 years now, the AU celebrated 50th anniversary in 2013. Why is it that uh, all these resolutions implemented are not effectively implemented? Uh, is there something that we Tanzanians don't know, and yet we are a member, that stands on the way of implementation? Uh, first, uh, I should thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, discussion for the first time and uh, just to go straight to your question one th thing one has to bear in mind that AU and its predecessor the OAU is an intergovernmental organization and a politically charged organization. It politically charged? Indeed. <laughs> this is a very, very fundamental <laughs> word, as it were. Mm. Indeed. In that respect, whoever deals with this organization yeah. has to bear that in mind, that it is a member state, association of member states, a sovereign states, which have their own national interests in the first place at heart. Mm -hmm. And therefore, whatever is decided, uh, he, one has to bear in mind the domestic agenda. Okay. Which, what are uh, my people back home <coughs> want the African solidarity notwithstanding, but charity starts at home and not from home. In that regard, it's true these annual summits, mm -hmm. important as they are, the decisions which are taken essentially are decisions. Resolutions in the context of African uh, Union don't bind. What it binds is resolution, uh, decisions, decisions yes, yes. and regulations, mm -hmm. and the subsequent uh, treaties, etc., etc. Resolutions in another forum, like the UN Security Council, is another matter. They bind, but within the context of the African Union, mm. they don't. Now, when it is decided there that we want to do this, yes. the domestication of that decision mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. is very critical. And any decision of that kind has financial implications. So first is domestication, institutionalization yes. in the local context. Yes. Second, financial implications. Implications, mm -hmm. what it means to the basket of the member states. Are they capable? Or are they just taking as a question of respect? Okay, we are 54 here, I can't be seen as a, an isolated fellow, etc., etc. They, they join the bandwagon. But what is critical is that, that what Professor Nyirabu has uh, mentioned, 
that lack of political will yeah. in certain respect is very, very Crucial. fundamental. Because if there is that political will, mm -hmm. then you find that any decision taken in Addis Ababa or elsewhere, yes. one has to implement it. Mm -hmm. So there could be some, I believe, and there I differ with uh, my brother, Professor, that is development, there, there is no uh, significant changes. To my, uh, probably I misquote him. But uh, to me, what lacks the significant changes or impact, the impact has always been there. For mm -hmm. any decision, you should bear in mind that the decision to liberate the continent was very critical. And uh, the, the sacrifice they managed, the decision to transform the OAU into AU was also very critical. Was that based on impact? Indeed, it has impact because of the expanded mandate of the, this constitutive act as contract, uh, contrasted to the OAU charter. All right. The provisions here are more forward-looking than the ones in the, the charter. For example, Article 4H and J in this provision say that member states can they intervene into a member state's country when peace and security is threatened. There are signs of war, genocide, etc., etc. That was not there in the, the charter. So that is qualitatively has an impact. And we saw Burundi 1, 2045, we managed to send troops there in the form of South Africa contributed, uh, Mozambique contributed, Ethiopia contributed, et cetera, et cetera. What we did in, 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 in Yanjuan, 208, I think we sh had it been those provisions in the charter, we shouldn't have done that. But now we, we are capable of doing that. Oh, so right. what is, it, uh, in brief, lack of that political will is there. And it's not. And uh, we should is have. It, is it widely known among the leaders that, uh, you know, uh, it, it, sitting it, together there by the end of the day, it's the political will which quietly they know they don't have it. I don't know whether it is known or unknown, but I, I believe that it is known amongst the, the leaders. Okay. But there are, so, there are some leaders who are committed and uh, who would like to push their agenda, of an African agenda. Yes. And that's uh, how we, we see some changes. There was a study done, for yeah. your information, yeah. between 1963 to 1990, uh, to, to, to 002, yes. when AU was born. Yes. Over 600 decisions, declarations, by then, where declarations yes. had been uh, taken, yes. but the implementation yes. was almost 25%. Had that been implemented by 50%, yes. then I agree with Professor Nilabu that we should have, Africa shouldn't have been where it, it is, is today. today. Excellent. Let's hear from um, Madam here. The summit in, uh, in Kigali. At least, it's nice to hear that they also discuss the question of gender, mm -hmm. the role of women. But you're not here just because you are a lady, but because you're an ambassador. Mm -hmm. You've heard the two speakers, the two professors here, and one right. of them from the kitchen way back. I mean, this question of implementation has become very serious. Why is it? As you try to explain what Professor said as well, political will. In your view, what do you think this is happening? Yeah, let me start, start by thanking you yes. for inviting me to this uh, panel. But I also congratulate you for bringing back this week in perspective. <laughs> Again, on the air. <laughs> I was missing it. Well, that is the Director General. Why should thank the General, Dr. Yeba? Yeah, so I've heard uh, what the doctor here said, uh, my colleague, uh, Ambassador Viswala, has said. I think they have said. Uh, Maybe they have said it all. But let me 
add, first of all, the, when you hear of these resolutions, yes. the decisions that come out of these summits, you know, it's a hard taking to prepare a resolution because it's consensus building to get all the member states rally on that specific decision. Which, it's not one minute, which are now 53, is it? 52, 53. The, the newest member of the AU is 54. Sudan. 54. Yeah, 54, 54 with South mm -hmm. Sudan. Yes. So it's painstaking. I know, of course, when he was a permanent representative there, the ambassador Biswalo, because that thing, when you said he was in the kitchen, they cook them. <laughs> oh, they cook them, <laughs> 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 They cook them by the time the heads of state come. It's yeah. already cooked. Okay. Sometimes they don't have enough time <laughs> to go through each resolution. Okay. The implication of it. So that's when, because everything is bestowed on these heads of state for implementation. But then, let me confess that um, one of the senior members of the secretariat was telling me out of frustration mm -hmm. that, you know what, we spend so much time in preparing these summits, these resolutions, yes. when they are in Addis Sababa, by the time they get to the airport, yes. Bore, international airport, he said, you'll be lucky that they still remember <laughs> the what decision that they, they took. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyway, let me say that um, the resolutions, yes. I agree with uh, Professor Nyirabuya that, of course, there is a political will. Yes, that is one. But the most critical stumbling block in implementing these resolutions yeah. is the capacity. The capacity in terms of mostly financial resources. You know, they come up with very ambitious and um, very good sounding <laughs> resolutions and decisions. But then implementation requires sometimes a lot of resources. Oh, implementation in terms of what? Of the secretariat now? The IU secretariat? No, no, or the, in terms of the I mean, secretariat, okay. because usually decisions are taken at that uh, continental level. Yes. But implementation is always at the, the national, level. on the ground. Mm -hmm. So for the secretariat to be able to implement what the heads of state have asked them to do, first of all, they don't have that resources. You know, we know, I know you have questions about the financial constraints yeah. that yeah. Are the organization as the secretariat has been facing. So if, for example, they decide that um, all by consensus, let us deploy a peacekeeping force to South Sudan. Yes, which they've done this time. Which they have done. But when it comes to implementation, yes. there is no budget for that. There is no budget for that. Then they have to go to the partners, to the donors. It takes a, a long time before they could be able to marshal all the resources they need. So I was happy that in Kigali, for the first time, this was a well-organized summit with only key strategic issues. I think there were only three. And for the first time, they started as in a retreat, a retreat that was opened only to the heads of state, the ministers of finance, the ministers of foreign affairs. So they deliberated on the three strategic issues. One was the continental free trade area. Two what issues. What they call the common market. Yes, common market free trade, trade area. Two on uh, peace and security. And there are only two issues, Sudan and Burundi. And they had to take a decision on that. But most important is about the financing. Yeah. Because they said whatever decisions we take at the summit, it will all be predicated on how much we can be able to fund. So they took a decision, and uh, of course you must have followed, I wasn't in Kigali, but I was being following, yes. that they decided to not only install, but to also decide to implement the 0 0.2 levy mm -hmm. on all imported goods mm -hmm. they, they in call the continent. Product, yes, yes, yes. products. So after that, they went to the summit with those decisions. Now the issue is whether all the countries will be able to implement the 0 0.2 levy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I leave I it, see, I, I leave I it see, to I the see, central, see central bank, uh, the, the economists. Yeah. 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 So that is the big question. But the important thing, that for the first time, you had all countries signing to them. 
because there have been so many proposals. There was even a task force under uh, President Obasanjo. They came up. But this one, I think it was worked out by the help of uh, the former president of the ADB, Donari Kaberoka. Okay. Uh -huh. So I think, it's, uh, and of course, with his background, maybe this could be implemented. So we are praying that uh, countries will be able to implement this. But let me also say, apart from the political will, about the financial resources, I don't think the Secretariat or the AU as such has such an effective monitoring and evaluation mechanism. Who monitors? Who puts somebody to account? Is there any mechanism that if Tanzania does not provide this 0.2 percent, what is the accountability? How do you the, hold this country they, they, accountable? They, they, yeah, and they can censor it. I mean, there are methods of, of course, there are methods of sanctions. If you, you if you, I think, uh, I don't know how many years, if I tell you the 14 your contributions, I think then you are not given a speaker to speak, you don't given documents. Sometimes. In the past, I heard this, to, sorry to cut yeah. short, in the past, I heard, because I spent, I, I spent some seven years in Addis Ababa, mm. um, even, even recruitment of staff from that particular country becomes difficult if you're not. If you are Contrib not contributing, if, if you are behind, if, if you are behind your contribution, but most, of course, the most embarrassing is that if you are head of state comes, you cannot speak. Okay, uh, <laughs> and they time it so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you will tell us how it works. All right. So my my at least my submission here is of course the issue of political will, but the financial constraint, the capacity of capacity. the secretariat, because in most of this, I mean, I don't think the AU has offices in our countries except those are. Developed countries, that I've seen them, we have the official, you see. Yeah. So, so who monitors? Who evaluates? That's the major question. Okay. We, we'll come back to that very quickly. Let's, yeah. let's hear from, um, um, from a journalistic point of view as well as a legal point of view. Um, Dale, yes. you've heard the three speakers here. OAU, AU, AU. And um, newspapers carry a lot of stories about AU uh, and the summits every year. So, what's your um, take on this? Uh, uh, as a ritual, I also should start by thanking you for inviting me here. And uh, actually, I almost agree with the everyone, every point made. Uh, but a little bit to expand on the political will issue. Uh, when I look at this question of political will, I, I try to conjure a little bit and go back by those days, during those days when we are fighting for freedom. Tanzania could harbor the so-called freedom fighters, though from the western part they were called terrorists, from Rhodesia, from Mozambique, from Angola, from South Africa, where the funds were coming from. So it takes commitment. I find like uh, they are enjoying being presidents of small, small states, and maybe they are afraid, like Britain, to submit themselves fully to the AU. So they have a sort of reservations. When they engage with the EU, they partly engage and they partly not. And at the end of the day, there is nothing tangible which can be achieved at the AU. If they don't change their attitude, be fully committed to AU, and more especially, uh, the, the, the entry point. I don't see the swifty, any swift mechanism in place, which can do the monitoring and evaluation. Yes, they have started the so-called peer, um, peer review mechanism, but countries are submitting themselves for public scrutiny. Yes. You are not coerced anyhow to bring one, two, three or so, but you submit what you'd like to submit, say democratically, I'm at this stage, politically, I'm at this stage, culturally, education, Regardless so of what, whether, yeah. whether it's it, true you're at that level or not. There, yeah, it, it's in some extent, yeah. <laughs> that uh, we, we need to we need have a mechanism in place which can help in this peer review mechanism where the instrument will be working domesticated at national level. But as she was saying, you find like at the Foreign Affairs Ministry, you have a department which is dealing with these issues. And at times they do cook the information. They pump the heads of state with a lot of information which you cannot internalize by the time they are in the meeting. And at times the meeting goes beyond midnight. They are there sleeping, getting out, boozing a little bit. By the time they finish, 
you ask That's them what they have deliberated. Two days, eh? Don't forget. It's two right? days, but at times it goes even beyond midnight. I have been there. I know how it works. And by the by that time, the ambassador. I think it's two, 1998 or so. I was mm. there with him. Yes. But I saw how they were working. It it it, it didn't impress them. It it didn't impress me so much. But in Rwanda, I can see the roadmap. Mm. We have started with the African passport. Mm. This passport actually it is creating the way for free movement of people. Yes, they have started with the diplomats from the head of state first. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. number one, two, and so forth. But I think now it should be taken down, uh, devolved mm -hmm. to the locals, to, to 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 trading than aiding. We should wipe up this um, mindset of aiding. When we go for support at even things which we could afford, actually it it belittles Africa a little bit. We send the troops to Sudan, we go to Washington to ask for the gun, guns and the bullets. I, I'm not sure they are going to help us properly. <laughs> we should have <laughs> our own unit, which will be financing our troops. Even if we say they go there at noon, they will be there at noon. But if you ask for funding, maybe they have their own interest in there. At times, they will drain the funding and you will never save lives. So I think Africa has to put to put in more commitment to African Union uh, on top of the political will will be somewhere. And by trading, that also can be another mechanism to trace the 0.2%. The but uh, I, I'm afraid if it is <laughs> executable. <laughs> 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 Professor. <laughs> well, uh, I'm uncomfortable with some of the arguments being presented. Yes. Capacity for the Secretariat. Yes. I don't think the member states wants the African Union to be a strong institution. You don't. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> if you go a little bit back into history, yes. the formation of the Organization of African Unity yes. was the politics of compromise. We have something, we don't have something. So it was a loose, loose organization. In fact, the Secretary General was called Administrative Secretary General. That was the right title. Of it. The Arutele, the yeah. first one. Now, the transformation, which uh, is, uh, Swaro is talking about, to African, to African Union, they changed the commission. But if you look in detail, the commission has no powers. The so, power. Madam Damini Zuma. No power. She doesn't have power. She wants to get power in South Africa. That's why she doesn't want to <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> no wonder she has so, decided to quit. <laughs> so that, that capacity is a noble idea, but realistically, are these countries going to transform the African Union into a strong institution? I don't think so. I don't think so. so, so now, the other thing about mm -hmm. domestic politics, which uh, Dr. Bissaro mentioned. Yes. Now, if you know that there is a domestic uh, something that's going to prevent for you, why do you go to, to issue that resolution to begin with? To be seen, to be there. I agree. Maybe. That's what I said. <laughs> 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 yeah. And the passport is I have very bad reservations about the passport. It will never work. It will never work. There are a lot of there are a lot of groundwork that has to be done. No wonder they started the heads of state, and then hopefully they say 2018 okay. they will begin. But there are a lot of things. To so they just issued those passports. There's an issue of security concerns group. among countries. They may yes. not want uh, people to move freely. Yes. There's issue of uh, unemployment. Look at what happened in South Africa. Eh? No, 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 we we have a similar issue in with East the Africa. in East African, East African community. East Africa, mm -hmm. huh? Some Rwanda people. has agreed for free movement. Tanzania were reluctant. Yes. So th there are certain basic factors that have to be addressed in order to have this commonality of African passport taking place. How about the common uh, the common market? I mean, there was that question, but we can answer that. How the about common market because that is related more or less <laughs> that to has that. Been talk we've been talking about African common market for many years. Began with the Lagos Plan of Action 1980, mm -hmm. Abuja Treaty 1991. Uh, and up today, we're still talking. ECWAS, one of the oldest regional organizations, yes. began in 1975. Mm -hmm. Intra trade among ECWAS. That's the Economic Commission of West Africa. Uh, yeah, countries. Economic Commission of West Africa. The trade between member countries is negligible, despite that long time ago. Uh, can you say anything about us then? Look at the East African community. community. We are where, where are we? We are moving. Eh? <laughs> but that's We're ahead of others. Yeah. 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 Eh? It is for East Africa. <laughs> and the tripartite. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you finished your argument? <laughs> 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 
before he comes in. <laughs> this is getting <laughs> very tricky. Uh-huh. And the other, the other <laughs> point that they talked about the transformation was Article 4H, or mm. the Constitutive Act of Union. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, has it really worked? We gave the example of what? Comoro. Comoro is a small fish. <laughs> and actually, the African Union yes. was, uh, was divided on that. South Africa withdrew from that. It was only some committed member countries, yes. Tanzania, Sudan, and I think Libya, that really went to that, uh, that extent. So we, we go back to the word that Deo uh, referred to, commitment. Burundi to has other... refused to accept African Union troops. Yesterday, South Sudan said, we don't want even a single soldier from the African Union. What is African Union going to do? And we know there's conflict in South Sudan. That's a decision. They made South Sudan has refused. Graduate, well, I want you to run it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Can I? <laughs> yeah, come in, come in, please, come, come in. It's a dialogue. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, the question of uh, not participating in take, uh, taking part in a decision which you don't believe you can implement it. Uh, the professor is alluding to that. Uh, well, I used to, it reminds me of my one of the late Professor Mazrui that uh, the future of a professor is to provoke um, broad questions, and uh, that's how uh, the professorial work works. Now, he's playing his duty. The question of not taking part and uh, taking part at this level is immaterial. What the guiding principle, this is their Bible, this is their constitution. And whatever they do is within this framework at that level. And when you go to Article 7 of this, the decision is either by consensus and the consensus, and the consensus is not unanimity. You should bear that in mind. Or failure to that, you go to voting. Mm-hmm. To th- two by two third, if it is so agreed by two third, a decision is taken. Which is very so in, in most cases, unless it's, it's a very rare. burning issue, yeah. they avoid that. They avoid mm-hmm. It's always Except within the, the African election. spirit hmm? that they go it by consensus. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So if you are a member of 53, you may be having a dissenting position on a particular issue, but 34 also have agreed. You have to go by that. Secondly, the question of, um, say, Komoro. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether your rules do permit to, to mention... Uh, we, we don't mention names. Uh, mm-hmm. Names of the countries are allowed. Well, we can mention them. We can mention them. The, 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 the question of Comoro, yes, it might be seen because it's a small country, archipelagic state, and then so many big ones could just go there. But when you are there, is among the 54 member states, has a sovereign right. Mm-hmm. So you, it is capable of rejecting, just like mm-hmm. Burundi is rejecting, just like South, South, Afri- South, 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 South Sudan is rejecting. But in any kind of this arrangement, there is always a leader. A student or a professor of international relations, variable geometry within the inter- integration. Somebody should be there to lead. Uh, uh, the the, the are, flying goose principle. Case, uh, so now, so here there point? are some like minded countries, they have volunteered to implement that decision on behalf of the African continent. What's wrong with that? Should we wait it from Paris? Yeah, no, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the, the fact or is, the fact somewhere is, else? if, for example, you have those pioneers, you have those countries that are ready to do it, but the, 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 the country concerned says no. Are they going to impose themselves in there? Are they going then, to fly soldiers there in a country where... Then that, that's what there? I said, Article 4H. 
compels, according to this article, for with your permission. Maybe it, yeah. In, in it, terms of, of it time, says oh, okay. it, it, mm -hmm. that member states can deploy troops there. But Article J yeah. within this, yeah. the the country of the the, the, the concerned country can ask from AU or any other member state to come and uh, restore order, to assist to restore order. Yeah. And that's what Sudan first did. I mean, we, Uganda deployed troops there because it was invited by Saroki. Fine. Professor, you keep on uh, hammering. Am I? <laughs> you can see her. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but you oh. know these constitutions, they can be floated around. Mm -hmm. In many instances, some, in some countries, they are not respected. So uh, let us hope that the OU <laughs> will respect the constitution. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, by constitution. the way, it's not a Bible or a Quran. No. Mm -hmm. you, you see, if I could contribute something on this. Uh, let's say we use the issue of uh, Komoro. Yes. Uh, Bakari did not consent as well. But we sent it to When you say Bakari, of course we don't mention the, of the leader of Komoro. <laughs> the president of Komoro or that's the opposition leader? Maybe they were saying so. The, 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 uh, call them the they did not consent the, the troops to go in there. But AU, under the abdel of AU, Tanzania inclusive, sent the troops and it was hosted, if I'm not mistaken. So even in Sudan, I don't think the two sides are, are likely to consent uh, these troops to come in. Yes. If you look at, ah, you don't want men names mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe the ruling and the opposition, <laughs> mm -hmm. the, 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 the way they are, they, they are negotiating their ways, I, I even fail to understand them. What are they aiming at? At times they talk, you see like they are going to reach a resolution, but overnight they erupt. But when they are contacted, they say, ah, we are not a part of this conflict. So I think African Union needs to get in there. Time might, be, might not be with us. If we continue delaying, it will happen like it happened in Rwanda in 1994. We sat in, in four wars uh, trying to define what is genocide, whatever. It took 120 days to define genocide, and the people are killed like a hell. So I think uh, in southern Sudan, African Union need to take the leadership and show the way to the world. But again, the bottom line now, but are they financially capable? Of doing so. <laughs> now, I think, I think, I think yeah, let's, let's, let's go on. to the question of the, <laughs> the, 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 the uh, question of financing because it keeps on coming and Ambassador Mulamula emphasized on that. Now, of course, you, you, you tend to share the concerns that the EU is not financially self reliant. Um, in one program, was it here? I think it is either Balela or somebody else said. Uh, even the headquarters of the AU was financed by the Chinese. And then I read somewhere uh, where one ambassador, one minister was saying, look, when we, so we depend so much on the f uh, donor funding, we don't know. These might have their own agenda. They will influence what decisions we make. So what should be done very quickly to sort out this question of um, AU financing? Members don't pay. And then what do you do? I think, of course, let's go back to Kigali again. Yes. Uh, if the decision of Kigali yes. is, is implemented, even if it's not 100% implemented, yes. but if the commitment that was shown, then it means the secretariat budget, whether it's for development or for running the secretariat, it will cut that dependence. Because, I mean, if you take like these countries, big countries that have big volumes, of products of imported gas. If you put a levy of 0 0.2, yes. that, that's not small money. Yeah. That's not small money. So let's give it time and see, because they're saying by 2017, mm. then this would all be integrated in the budget. Yes. And since it has also been given. When you say integrating the budget, that's with the word you use, domesticating yes. that decision yes. into <coughs> the member states' exactly. own budgets. Own budgets. Because what I'm saying is, um, Usually these decisions are taken at the continental level, yes. at implementation at the national level, at the domestic level, as you say, domestication. So if, again, we come to the commitment, to the political will, because it has been shaming, shaming the African Union, shaming the heads of state to keep on begging, taking decisions that you cannot implement, and having almost 100% of the budget, depending 
dependent on the on the donor countries. It's a shaming. We beg in our own countries, yes. and then we beg on behalf of the EU. But also, <laughs> <laughs> because also at the at the 50th anniversary yes. of the AU, uh, 2013. Right? Yes, mm. because there was also a commitment that they should put an end once and for all to this African paradox. Rich Africa, poor Africans. That Africa is just, we can mobilize our own resources. So I think that time is now. I don't see that any time, other shortcut. That time is now. That time is now. That time is yeah. now. Of course, all okay. other alternatives to funding have been tried. <laughs> but it has not worked. <laughs> but let's hope this one will work. Yes. Um, there was a, Nanek, you want to respond to this question? Or? I want to add something to that. Well, uh, Yes, the history of our OAU and the history of African Union <coughs> tells a lot about lack of financial resources. And the evidence is there. You know, the 2016 the budget is, I think, 416 million. And uh, from what they have worked out, 40% should come from member subscriptions. The remaining 60% is what? Donor funding. Donor funding mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So on that basis then, it becomes very difficult even to implement some of the things they've agreed. They should have a certain, certain priorities to work on because they know there's limited time of finances yeah. available yes. so that they can work out that one. Eh? And uh, you yes, they have agreed for 0.2% according to the ambassador. Some of these member countries have not been paying their dues. <laughs> Forget about the levy. The, the, by the way, the 2% was actually um, re referred to a press conference, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr. Mahiga, Mahiga. yesterday yeah, yeah, when yeah, he yeah, arrived yes, from yeah, the EU. Something yes. that I also learned. Uh, yes. Mm. yes. But the question is, if you have no, I've not been paying my annual sufficient dues, then we're imposing another 0.2%. Yes. Do you expect me to pay the 0.2%? Will it work? No. Will it work? Or rather, will it work? Wait, what do you think? Will it work? It will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Okay. Okay. Unless, <laughs> unless a sanctioning <laughs> mechanism is put in place. Which means, again, if uh, a member state promises to, uh, to Being pay, denied and they mic then they will be denied the microphone. <laughs> 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 he has another platform where he can use his mic. <laughs> <laughs> but denying yes. a, a, a mic yes. uh, was very effective. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For your information, okay. because it was introduced during the uh, Ahmed Salim's era, yes. yeah, when he was a secretary general, I wanted yes. to, to and it to had an this, impact this on that. Started right. nineteen When you are head of state or government, is denied of a mic. Yes. Do you want the job? <laughs> <laughs> That's one. It, it had an impact. Yes. Secondly, I think it, we have been on a begging spree for a while. Yes. In so far as uh, financing our uh, continental uh, projects and programs. Yes. But when it comes to the question of various re commissions and reports, uh, committees had been established, the latest being of Obasanjo, yes. of which was shot down in the summit and they were uh, in the Diamond uh, Jubilee uh, celebrations. Yes. That, I thought, it was a step in the back. But However, the decision from Kigali yes. is giving us hope that uh, this time around yes. we shall be there but because we shall own our own agenda yes at times the donor community's agenda is diametrically opposite to ours yes. how, right how do you expect <laughs> them to finance that uh, no such thing as and if but you go to them they, they, they will, they, they, of course they will influence your decision but a footnote let us assume that this 0 0.2 percent yes. will be available yes. There is an element of the judicious management of those resources at the level of the AUC there. If they are not well managed, perhaps, That's perhaps the, the, the capacity it Madame may was about. frustrate the mm -hmm. member states mm -hmm. to contribute. All right. Well, ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> we have so let, let's we let's have see if we uh, can uh, let's <laughs> see if we can address this. We combine these two. Yeah. Eh? Uh, So, we, all what we have discussed so far uh, points to a number of uh, fundamental issues which need to be, need to be addressed. Uh, do, you think, do you think these are the major challenges facing, or some of the challenges facing the AU? And um, is there a future for the AU? And what is the relevance? Very quickly. We'll the challenges, uh, there are challenges, there are challenges. 
I think the first thing that we have to, uh, to understand is uh, what is Africa interested in? What are we trying to build? Are we trying to move to African Union, which was the idea of Kwame Nkrumah? Or continental Africa. Uh, continental Africa Single. or association of African states, <laughs> which were created by Berlin. You know, we are honoring Berlin. By accepting these states, we are honoring Berlin Conference. Yes, yes. So what do we want to do? If you want to move to continental African Union, United States of Africa, then we have to be serious and work on that. All because right. the measures we are taking now do not lead us to that. All right. Very quickly. Yeah, I think it's a question of commitment once again. Anything they decide, they resolve, should be worked on seriously. Short of that, we'll be wasting time. Indeed, Africa needs to have this organization. But uh, an organization which should do be people-centered. Because at the end of the day, that should come from the grassroots. Yes. The citizenry should be involved. Any decision taken in Addis without involving the people on the ground yes. will be another EU. Brussels takes the bureaucracy to stay there, they take a decision, member states, I'm not sure. Yes. So the, the, the previous word that uh, the AU or the previous AU was, uh, was there for the head of state. Talking to shop. Talking shop. <laughs> the head of state. I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> All right, fine. You, you've, you've made a point. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, what's your last word? <laughs> no, my last word is that, of uh, course, AU is... Is relevant. Yes, we would be in a state of disarray mm. if we didn't have that kind of forum. Yes, and if you see that nowadays the cohesion that exists is because of that organization, yes. and it has gone through transformation, it has gone through the paradigm shift. It is now where it is. I must say we have come a long way. What is needed again? The commitment, the political will. If we have the political, I mean the the financial muscle. Yes then I see that the AU is the place, the organization to have. Wow. You can only strengthen it. Thank you very much, my panelists. Um, we, we have to wind we up. Are oh. We have to wind up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> next time. <laughs> I, I started that way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next time. Oh. Well, I mean, I mean, viewers will have uh, found it very, will find it very interesting because um, all the arguments put forward by the four panelists here, by the four of you, uh, lead it to one point, which is the last point Mama says. I mean, we surely need the AU. I mean, it has done a lot. And uh, if certain uh, issues or challenges are addressed, one of which is uh, commitment and uh, political will, and uh, basically and fundamentally the financial position. Um, it's no longer, it should no longer be taken as a talk shop. Yeah. Uh, it uh, is. Uh, okay, <laughs> it says, it says. We can develop another program yeah. uh, to discuss this too. Is yeah. it? Is it not? Huh? <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much, my panelists. <laughs> Viewers, <laughs> you've read the views of my panelists here. Very, very interesting. With a sense of humor as well, which is always very good. The 27th Summit of the Heads of State and Government in Kigali, with the theme, actually, we need to refer to this, human rights, and especially the rights of women, discuss a number of important challenges. There are about three issues which Madam said, facing the continent, such as security, conflicts, and self-reliance of the organization itself. However, the summit was able to accept to in the introduction of a continental passport which may not be successful in the end, and approved, by a, and approved a plan to send a standby force to South Sudan. <laughs> On the premise that at this 50th anniversary, the AU made a pledge not to bequest uh, wars and violence, conflicts, to the future generations of Africans. And since the, and see silence, of course, that's what they meant, the guns by 2020. Right? I suppose we wait and see. According to the president, the vice president of Tanzania, um, Madam Samia Slu Hassan, Tanzania will work with other UN member states to address security challenges facing the continent. It is encouraging to hear 
that the AU is deemed to be financially self-reliant, hopefully this will be achieved sooner than later as we've heard the charging of 0.2% on all imported products, whether it will be successful or not. The summit proposed the appointment of, uh, appo uh, I mean, postponed the appointment of the next chairman of the commission to January 2017. And um, we understand there are a few names floating around, maybe even one from, from this country, although the Minister for Foreign Affairs was lamenting yesterday that uh, it doesn't seem that a number of Tanzanians, there are no Tanzanians who seem to, to put to their name forward. So if you are valuable, you think you can become a chairman of the AIO Commission, please submit your candidature. It will be considered amid the rest of the candidates from Africa. That's all we have for you today until next uh, Sunday at 21 hours and on Tuesday at 15 hours for the repeat program. On behalf of my panel, Professor Muhabi, Ambassador Mulamola, Deo Balile, Professor Ambassador Joram Miswaro and my TBC television center crew. Thank you viewers and goodbye.